Hello everyone, welcome back to our controller modeling series. So today we are going to um, probably apply some of these modifiers and uh, get our controller ready so we can start adding the little bits like the, uh, the buttons and the, uh, the thumbsticks and the, the, the uh, I believe that's the D-pad, yeah. Oh, excuse me, and also the triggers and whatnot. So anyways, let's just jump right into it. Um, so before we do anything else, I'm going to kind of I'm going to single out our controller hitting shift H while it's selected and just kind of do a brief overview. Um, click on shading here and go to map cap. And if we click on this um, circle and we change it to this re really reflective one, you can really get an idea for how your geometry is flowing. Um, and with the subdivision on with one set to the viewport, um, you can see it looks pretty good. I mean, there isn't really anything to complain about. Um, we can also look at our reference picture over here. I have a side view. Um, the bottom might be a bit too uh, sharp, um, so maybe we should fix that before we apply anything. So I'm actually going to turn off the subdivision in the viewport by clicking this little monitor. I'm going to change shading back to studio. And let's see if we can fix this uh, roughness right here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to try to go into vertex select. I'm going to select these. I'm going to hit alt a to deselect all the other selected vertices. I'm going to select these few right here. Um, I'm going to shift click that one to deselect that one. And we still have proportional editing enabled, so let's just kind of click and lower the proportion a bit and drag it into the center a bit more. Yep, that looks okay. And it actually still is a bit like, it's a bit too thin, it's like a pencil. So let's select the other side and hit S and then X, and we're just going to scale that up a bit with proportional still enabled. Um, and yeah, so that looks a little less, you know, uh, like pinched. We we'll probably do that a little bit more. Um, let's lower the influence. Um, and let's see what that looks like now. So yeah, that looks a bit better. So now that we have our general shape looking good, uh, what we can do is we can apply one of these subdivisions. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our modifiers tab, and if you don't have these added, please add them. Um, again, make sure you apply the mirror first, so add modifier, mirror, and then after that's added, hit add modifier, subdivision. So I already have these done, but you'll notice I'm not going to apply the mirror yet because we want to actually still edit some of the things after we do the subdivision. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit apply on the subdivision, and you can see we still don't have it mirrored yet, so we can still turn this on and off. So if we edit anything on this side of the geometry, it'll still carry over to the other side. So. I'll leave that enabled so we can see the other side. I'm going to hit 1 on the numpad to go in the front facing view. I'm going to hit tab and you can see all this new geometry that's been created. And it also shoot, uh, smoothed out the general shape of our uh, Xbox controller, so I think that looks pretty good. Um, but what we're going to do is we don't really need all of this geometry. Um, we can get rid of some of it. So we're going to hit Z and then wire, or wireframe and then we're going to actually tab out edit mode. I'm going to hit Alt H to bring back our reference picture. Um, so while in edit mode, you can see we kind of lost some of the uh, shape of our object when we were, when we did the subdivision. So what we can do is I'm going to hit Alt H to select everything, um, and we'll leave proportional editing enabled. And what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of select some vertices in our object, and we're going to just kind of bring back that general shape that we lost. You can see just by dragging some of this down. I'm only doing it, I'm making sure to only do it on the Z axis on the middle because this is going to be merged together with a mirror. So you don't want to drag it out like this. You can see that disconnects it. So I'm also going to do the same over here. I'm going to select some of these vertices, just kind of proportionally drag them out. Um, I'll actually make this one a bit smaller so it doesn't drag too much. You can see we can kind of move this around a bit and make sure that nothing looks too ugly that we just did. Um, let's go into the side view and take a look at this. Um, you can see we kind of lost some of this jaggedness up here. So what we can do is we can uh, select some of these, some of this geometry and just kind of drag it up a bit. Let's see how that looks. That looks pretty good. Um, let's actually drag it. Let's turn off proportional editing and drag this down a little bit. So this is a bit of a smoother surface. Um, let's check the back. Back could also be uh, tweaked a bit. Turn back on proportional editing. Go into wireframe. Select this general row and uh, just kind of drag it up a bit. 
that looks okay. Um, I don't think we really need a bevel or anything, so yeah, that looks okay. Um, so yeah. Um, anyways, now that we kind of fit the shape a bit better after the subdivision, let's go back to the front view. And what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of some of these edge loops. So we'll go into wireframe real quick, and we're going to make sure we have edge selected so it's a bit easier to navigate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of look at some of these, some of this geometry and see what's necessary and what's not. So um, edges like this and uh, this are kind of necessary because they have a bit of the depth. It's really hard to notice after the subdivision. Um, and actually, we kind of caused a bit of a problem up here. Let's just kind of shrink this in and pull it down a bit. I don't know if you could see with the, uh, you can see we have some like indents. Just want to make sure this flows properly. It should be fine. Just want to make sure nothing's too jagged. Oh, and you can see when I scaled it, I actually, uh, moved our, our uh, geometry over here, so I'll turn on Vertex Select, and I'll set it to Vertex Mode, or Vertex Snapping, and when I drag on the uh, x-axis with the arrow here, and if I use this bottom one, kind of lock it to the center. We'll make sure that's the same for the top one too. We'll go to the back view by, I'm going to hold down Control and press 1, and I'll hide this uh, reference picture real quick. Let's just kind of drag this back over. And everything else should be uh, fixed with the uh, merge limit down here. Um, so our shape looks fine after I uh, mess it up a bit. That should be fine. Um, but yeah, let's get rid of some of this geometry that we didn't really need. So like this edge loop right here isn't really necessary, so I'll hit Alt-Click to select the entire edge loop. And I'll press X and dissolve edges. Um, I'm just going to slide these vertices over by uh, clicking them and then press double tapping G and slide them over just to make it a bit smoother on the uh, the uh, edge loop. Um, some of these side ones aren't really necessary. I'm going to make sure I'm in edge select. I'm just going to shift click some of them and then hit dissolve edges. And you can see it still keeps the general shape, but we just got rid of a good amount of geometry. Um, I'll leave this one, that one. Maybe we'll select these next. I'll select these two, solve edges, and just kind of eyeball it. It might be a bit different for your shit for your uh, controller if you're following along. Um, I'll leave that one. And make sure you're hitting a uh, dissolve edge, not delete edge, because we want to make sure that, uh, for example, if you hit delete edge, see how it breaks all the geometry. So that looks pretty good. Um, let's get rid of some of these flowing downward. So if I select this loop right here, dissolve edges, alt click, dissolve edges. That looks pretty good. Yeah. So let's double check, go to shading, matte cap. And you can see that we still have a general shape, but we just got rid of a good amount of vertices and faces that we didn't really need. Um, so yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, I think what we can do now is I'm going to make another backup real quick. So I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate, move that to backup one. Um, I'm not really concerned about the naming. This is just a rough backup just in case. Let's go ahead and apply our mirror modifier. You can see now we have all the geometry um, and the merge setting allowed us. And I'll Control Z to show you. But this merge limit right here, um, the, the vertices are close enough, but if you notice it isn't really connecting the center, you can bump this up a bit. But yeah, anyways, you can see that now it is formed, and if I single this out, you can see that all the uh, vertices in the center are connected. So that's nice. And you can see we basically have a general shape of a controller. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add some of the, uh, the uh, joysticks and buttons, and we're going to use some modifiers to help us out. It's going to look really cool. Um, so most of the detail of our controller is actually going to be just placing extra objects on it to make these uh, general layouts. Um, so what I'm going to start with first are the uh, joysticks. So this can actually be really complicated. You know, you might if you were to try something like this, you might try to like select the faces in like a circle format or whatever. You know, 
and then like extrude them out. But you can notice that's really hard and it might add a lot of like artifacts or it'll just look bad in general. But what we can do is we can add a, uh, we can create an object and then add a shrink wrap modifier so it looks like it naturally blends with the controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the front facing view and then go into wireframe and making sure we're not in edit mode, I'm going to hit shift A and we're going to add in a new primitive. We're going to add in a cylinder. Um, so the cylinder is, where'd it go? Where did it go? Um, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, we need to add in a cylinder. I don't know where it went though. Um, it's supposed to go to the, uh, the center of the 3D cursor. Oh, it's probably because I added it into the backup for some reason. So I'm going to select the cylinder. I'm just going to get rid of it real quick. Uh, making sure I'm in the first collection. I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm going to go to Mesh and I'm going to add in a cylinder. You can see there it is. Um, and you notice that in Solid View it actually has a top and a bottom. We don't want that. So we're going to hit on this before deselecting it or moving it. We're going to click on this little arrow right here. We're going to hit cap fill type and we're going to set it to nothing. So we have just the uh, like the, the uh, outer edge of the cylinder. So what I'm going to do is we're going to hit G and then Y and drag it away from the controller. And make, make sure that this is a separate object that we're not still in edit mode. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit R and then X so we can rotate it around the X. And I'm going to type in 90. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tab into edit mode and then hit S and just scale the whole thing down a bit. And I'm also going to scale it in the uh, Y, so S and then Y, so we shrink it down a bit. And you can see what we need to do is we need to make this um, this kind of part that sticks out of the Xbox controller um, for the joysticks. And you can also see it in this reference right here. You can see we need like that general loop that is uh, containing the thumbsticks. So we're going to make that out of the cylinder right here. So while in edit mode, what I'm going to do is making sure I'm in edge select. I'm going to select this uh, this outer edge on the back. I'm going to drag it over a bit. And I'm just going to hit S and just scale it up. And I'm going to drag it back a bit, just kind of eyeball it. Just kind of making this smoothing right here. Um, I think that looks good. And what we'll do is we'll hit Control R and add a little edge loop right here. I'm just going to scale it in a bit to kind of make it tapered a bit more, I guess, towards that the center edge loop. Um, and that looks good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this other edge right here. I'm going to hit E, and I'm going to right click to just leave it where it is. And I'm going to hit S and scale it in. And we're going to start making this uh, general like hard edge right here. So now that we have that loop, um, that loop right here, I'm actually going to turn off shading so it's a bit easier to see. Um, now that we have that loop right there, we're going to hit E. And then we're going to hit Y, and then we're just going to scale it in so we can kind of make it look like it's going into the controller a bit. Um, we're just going to pull it back a bit. And we don't actually have to connect it to anything because you're, really you're not really going to be able to see on the inside of that loop. So anyways, um, that looks that's pretty much all we have to do. Um, and with it selected, we're going to go to Object and Shade Smooth. And you can see it looks pretty good. Um, but we also need to do another step real quick to actually apply a modifier to it. So we're going to select this edge loop on the back and only the back. And then we're going to go down to this tab right here called Object Data. And under Vertex Groups, we're going to add a new group. And we're going to call it um, Shrink Wrap. So we know that's the vertices that we want to use in the Shrink Wrap modifier. And with, its, with that loop selected, I'm going to make sure that I click Assign. Um, so if I deselect everything, you notice with the Shrink Wrap um, group selected, if I hit select, it'll only select that um, back loop because that's what we assigned it to. And uh, actually while we're at it, we can also make sure that this inner loop is assigned to it. Um, so I'm going to make sure that they're both selected and hit assign. Um, you could also just select the inside loop and hit assign. It just kind of adds it into the group. And now what we have is we have our little uh, jutting out part for the thumbstick. So what we're going to do is we're going to just drag this a bit closer to the controller. So I'm actually going to get rid of the references again, so I'm going to select both objects and hit Shift H to single them out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit G and then Y and just kind of drag it towards the controller. I'm going to go into the front view and I'm going to hit G and drag it over a bit just manually. Um, so now what I'm going to show you how to use is the shrink wrap modifier. Now this is really great if you want to um, stick objects to another object surface. So with the uh, loop 
with this like outer ring thing can, uh, object selected, we're going to go to the modifier tab. We're going to hit add modifier. We're going to go under the deform section and we're going to click shrink wrap. Now what we need to do is assign the target. So we're going to hit the eyedropper and we're going to select the controller. And you notice it just kind of pancakes to the surface, but we wanted to just do that uh, edge loop ring that we made. So we're going to go to vertex group and then we're going to click shrink wrap. And you notice it drags the entire object of the, or it just grabs those, um, that vertex group and it shrink wraps it to the controller. Um, so you notice if we, uh, now if we move the object, it kind of dynamically moves it so that it's always connecting that, um, that vertex group to the controller. So that looks pretty cool. Now what we want to do is we're going to hit Alt H to bring back our reference. And in the front view, we're going to make sure it's aligned on this front view. So let's, oh, let's make sure we have just the uh, ring selected and we're going to drag it over. Um, and actually it could be, uh, it could be a bit smaller. So we're going to go tab into edit mode and just shrink it down a bit and then tab out of edit mode and line it up. And then you notice it's still a bit too far. So we're going to go in the side view. We're going to drag it in a bit. That looks good. Um, and I actually want it to be a bit um, a bit smoother on this bottom one. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit tab. And we can still edit the uh, those rings that we made, even though they're being shrink wrapped, because this is um, a non-destructive modifier. It doesn't actually edit the geometry. Um, we still have it saved. So I'm just going to scale this up a bit more. And then let's see what this looks like now. And you can see it looks pretty good. Um, Maybe if this top part was a bit smaller, so let's, uh, it's still selected, you can see. I'm going to hit S and then Z, um, and scale it down a bit, and I'm actually going to drag it a little bit. So we kind of have that, uh, we can also scale in the X to make sure it's not too wide on the edges. And you can kind of see we have that little housing for the thumbstick. Um, you can just kind of drag that around till it looks good to you, but we want to make sure that it is in the same area on the front facing view. Um, and what we can do is we can save time and we can make another one real quick. So if we hit shift D with just that one thing selected, we can drag it over here and place it down. And you notice now we have two little uh, like things to uh, place our thumbsticks in. And if I get rid of these references real quick, you can see it a bit better. Um, so yeah, that looks pretty good. So that's it for this video. And the next one we're going to actually in, add in the uh, thumbsticks. Um, and then we might also be able to get to the buttons, and those will look really cool. We'll add uh, the lettering inside and everything. So, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you were confused at all or didn't really know what was going on, please put it in the comments so I can uh, work on what I need to fix in the next video. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching.